When you first receive your PTZ Optics USB camera, the first thing you should do is read the included manual. Inside your box, you will find your camera, the manual, the power supply, a remote control, a USB 3.0 A to B cable, two AAA batteries, and a serial connection cable used for joystick controllers. Once you've read the manual, it is helpful to select the video resolution and frame rate you would like to use with your camera. The camera's resolution is set by a yellow dial on the back of the interface board. You can reference the available frame rates in your manual or on a table printed on the bottom of your camera. Note, the default dial is zero, which is 1080p at 60 frames a second. This is ideal for sports, but you may want to consider using setting six for 1080p at 30 frames a second for the classic natural video look depending on your application. This camera supports simultaneous USB 3.0, HDMI, and IP network streaming up to 1080p at 60 frames a second. The camera also supports non-simultaneous CVVS composite video output via the 3.5 millimeter connector when the camera resolution is set to 480i or 7576i. Once you have set your resolution dial, you can plug in the included power supply and turn on your PTZ Optics camera. If you would like to provide PoE, power over ethernet power to this camera, PTZ Optics has confirmed compatibility with the Wi-Fi Texas WT-GAF-PTZ Optics PoE splitter, which will provide power and ethernet to the camera. When you are first getting set up, it is helpful to connect your camera to an HDMI monitor, but you can also use the USB output to view video from your camera as well. Once your camera is powered on and connected to the network, you should determine whether you will use a dynamic or a static IP address. We will go into more detail in depth on this in step eight. A dynamic IP address can change periodically making it difficult to manage in the long term. We suggest setting up a static IP address and potentially a sequential IP address settings for tidy management of multiple cameras. For most networks, in order to connect to a camera, you must be in the same subnet of the LAN. For example, 192.168.1.123 and 192.168.1.111 belong to the same subnet, but 192.168.1.123 and 192.168.0.125 do not in most scenarios. Let's put the included AAA batteries inside our remote control and take a look at the features. You can pan, tilt, and zoom your camera using the up, down, left, and right arrow keys on your IR remote control. You can also set up a specific PTZ camera preset by clicking the preset button and then entering the number you want to set. You can try moving the camera and calling a preset quickly to test out the camera's movement operation. If you find the default camera preset movements too fast, you can always change the speed settings in your camera menu. You can access the OSD menu, which stands for on-screen display, for this camera by pressing the menu button. This is where you can navigate into the advanced features such as iris, shutter speed, gain, color balance, contrast, luminance, and much more just using the arrow keys. You can access the OSD menu remotely using the camera's IP address in any web browser or using one of our joystick controllers. You can control up to four cameras with a single IR remote control. Just use the short Shortcut star, pound, and the corresponding function key to set up unique camera IDs on your IR remote. For example, star, pound, F2 would set your camera to ID2 on your IR remote. Let's plug in our USB 3.0 cable into our laptop and pull in the video feed. Note, the minimum USB 3.0 system requirements are an i3 quad-core processor, but we recommend an i5 quad-core processor or better. Note, USB 3.0 is 10 times faster than USB 2.0. We highly recommend using USB 3.0 for uncompressed high-definition video. If you must use a USB 2.0 port, consider using 720p at a lower frame rate and enabling H.264 compression. Note, external USB hubs should be avoided. Give the camera its own USB port on the device, as they are not well suited to transmit HD video reliably. Caution: Some compatible USB 3.0 extenders do not support the full 5 gigabits bandwidth required for uncompressed HD video, so check bandwidth specs.
Always connect the PTZ Optics camera directly to the device in order to associate the UVC drivers before attempting to use any extension system. Finally, all PTZ Optics cameras with USB utilize the UVC USB video class drivers that are built into Windows, Mac OS, and Linux to stream HD video from your device via the USB 3.0 port. When your device successfully recognizes the camera, your device will register the PTZ Optics camera as an imaging device. You can see this in your Windows Device Manager program. Just type in Device Manager into the Windows Search Tool or the Mac USB Device Tree under Hardware. Now we can simply select the PTZ Optics camera as a webcam in almost any video conferencing or live streaming software. Let's open up the camera in Zoom, for example. PTZ Optics USB cameras feature UVC camera control, which allows many video conferencing and live streaming applications to use built-in PTZ controls. Let's quickly look at this feature in Zoom video conferencing. As you can see with the PTZ Optics camera selected, it will work with the Zoom Room iPad, but also will use normal Zoom video conferencing applications you use far and camera control. You will notice that your USB camera model also has a networking port we can use to remotely control and manage the camera. If you have a DHCP server, you can utilize it to automatically assign an IP address to your camera. This is a great way to temporarily assign an IP address to your camera. You can set up your camera with DHCP by using the IR remote and entering pound star four. Once the camera reboots, you can use the IR remote control to locate the dynamic IP address by pressing star pound four. You can access a static IP address to your camera using the Windows only IP address settings tool or with any Mac or PC computer's web browser. Let's use the web browser. Enter the IP address of your camera into your web browser and press enter. When prompted, enter the default username and password, which is admin admin. You may want to consider changing this default password in the admin area. Navigate to the network tab and choose fixed IP address. From the very first drop down menu, you can now enter the static IP address you wish the camera to use and press apply. You will now need to reboot your camera by clicking the system tab and clicking the reboot button. Now that your camera is all set up on your network, consider downloading the free PTZ camera applications available at ptzoptics.com apps. You can quickly tweak your camera settings and color match multiple cameras with advanced settings here. The new apps are available for both Mac and PC. When you first open the PTZ Optics camera control app, you should click the settings tab to enter your camera's name and IP address. You can name the camera anything you'd like. Once you have done this, you can click the camera's name to select this camera. This application features multiple views available in the view drop-down menu. Click the advanced tab to access controls such as shutter speed, iris, brightness, luminance, and much more. Finally, you can view your camera by clicking the window drop-down menu and clicking the preview window selection. You can make this preview window full screen or snap the preview window to your control panel. Now you can view the camera's video from anywhere on your local area network. You can choose from stream one or stream two, stream one being high definition, and Stream 2 being standard definition, which is used for lower bandwidth environments. Let's snap the video stream to the rest of our video controls. Before we leave this tool, let's set up a couple PTZ presets. This can be done by clicking the preset radio button and entering the name you would like to give your preset. Once you have done this, you can click any of the nine buttons available and your preset will be saved. You will notice that the program automatically enters recall mode after a preset is set. When you are in recall mode, clicking these preset buttons will recall your saved pan, tilt, and zoom presets. Let's connect the RTSP video stream from our camera with Open Broadcaster software, also known as OBS. The following steps will be very similar in video production software such as vMix, Wirecast, or XSplit. Open OBS and add a scene. In this scene, we can add a source with the plus button. And in the area next to the scenes, we can select media source and name the input. In the properties of this media source, we will uncheck the first two boxes, local file, and restart playback when the source becomes active. Now we simply need to enter our RTSP information into the input text field, which is the following RTSP colon slash slash the IP address of your camera slash one or slash two. The slash one or two represents the two available RTSP streams you can pull from each camera. Stream one being your high definition stream and stream two being your standard definition stream. To add audio into our RTSP stream, we will use a Rode microphone with a line level output and plug it into the 3.5 millimeter audio input on the back of our camera. The 3.5 5mm audio input will provide audio embedded into our IP stream and the HDMI output. You can configure your camera's RTSP settings in the video tab of the network interface. You have the ability 
to tweak your camera's RTSP settings to deliver reliable, high quality video over IP. Let's quickly review our recommended settings used for streaming RTSP video over your network. For 1080p video at 60 frames a second, we recommend a bit rate of 12,288 using the H.264 encoding protocol. For 1080p at 30 frames per second, we recommend 8,192 bit rate using the H.264 protocol. And for 720p video at 60 frames a second, we recommend using 6,144 bit rate with the H.264 protocol. Note that PTZ Optics cameras also support MJPEG and H.265 HEVC encoding protocols. If you would like to customize your RTSP settings, we highly recommend reviewing our PTZ Optics streaming settings guide available at ptzoptics.com slash downloads. Your camera is now set up and you've learned how to access the camera's video over IP. Your cameras can also output high definition video through SDI and HDMI simultaneously to fulfill even more advanced video production workflows. Consider joining our PTZ Optics user group at facebook.com slash groups slash PTZ Optics Pals. And if you have any follow-up questions, do not hesitate to reach out. If you encounter any issues during the setup process, feel free to submit a support ticket at help.ptzoptics.com or simply call the phone number listed on our website. Enjoy!